In this video, we're going to be talking about Modex user accounts and some of the things that you may have to do as an administrator of your website if you have people that are locked out or you want to do some basic administration of your users. So the first thing to mention is that by default at Gel Studios, we hide um, some of the common things to do with users. So if when you're logged into the manager, you don't see this manage or you don't see this users, just drop us an email and we can enable that for you. So let's first of all just click on this users button at the top and this will bring up the Modex uh, manager page for users and you can do lots of things here filtering them by the user group, searching by username, uh, full name, email address and lots of other statuses. Now the first thing to remember is that anybody who is on a Modex website has an account. So you as a manager or an administrator, you have an account. Uh, people that are logged on your website will have an account as well. The only thing which uh, differentiates what you can do on the website is all of the permissions that are assigned to that specific user. So that's why we don't normally enable this sort of stuff. But we're going to go through today some of the common things such as uh, changing passwords, stopping people from being blocked, and uh, what it actually even means to be blocked. So for the purposes of this video, I've made a test user, uh, Tony Stark. If we just right click and click update user, we can see that this is just a very, very basic user account. We have simply got in a username, which needs to be unique, a full name for that user, an email address, and a status of active, which is ticked. Now, a couple. let's just run through these fields, and they may seem pretty self-explanatory, but the main one really is username. So this is what somebody uses to sign into the website. So this may be your name, or for larger websites with lots of people, the unique identifier may be the email address. Uh, we've obviously got the full name, so again, depending on uh, the configuration, this will you know show up here in sort of like top right, um, or if they're logged into the uh, front end of the site, it may show in various places there as well. And then we've got the email address. Now the email address is an important one. Even if the email address is the same as the username, it's really important to make sure that this is accurate. And the reason for that is that if somebody was to reset uh, their password by clicking the forgot password link, that's the email address that the email will get sent to. So it's very important to make sure that that is accurate. Now, for most of the websites where um, user generation is done via logging in or accounts are made, the account will be automatically made and set up for you. So chances are all of this is going to come off of information which has been supplied from the user. So you won't really need to ever worry about any of these things. We then have lots of other pieces of information underneath here, which can be optionally filled out. Now, again, if you're dealing with a website which has a front end on it, uh, so people sign into the front end of the site, all of these things will be updated through a form which will exist in their login area. So you shouldn't really need to update any of these pieces of information underneath here. We've got on the right hand side here a couple of tick boxes. So the first one is active. So what does it mean to be an active user? Well, an active user means that they're able to sign into their account and they can log into the account. Um, now, if you have websites where registration is open, you may find, and if I just untick this and click save, just to go back to the users, you'll see that they're kind of grayed out. That means that they're not active. Now, there's a couple of things for this. One of them will probably be that they haven't clicked on an activation link in their email, um, or it might have been a misclick somewhere. Now, there's two ways that you can manually activate somebody. You can uh, tell them to obviously click on the link in their email, which will automatically activate them, or you can just double click here, click yes, and that will activate them. Uh, one of the little route you've got is you can obviously come underneath here, tick the active box, and then click save, and this will make sure that they're active. A couple of other things that we've got underneath here then, pseudo user. Now this is the main reason why we do not allow um, people to, to edit user accounts. If you click pseudo user, anybody can sign into the Modex manager uh, with that account and can do anything on your site. This pseudo user is uh, effectively like a godlike account. They can do absolutely anything. So if you're ever going through uh, editing users and you see that pseudo user ticked, it should only really be for um, us at Just Studios if we've developed a site or somebody with um, you know known intentions because uh, you don't really want that to be given out to anybody. Now the last option underneath here is blocked. 
And blocked can be uh, initiated in two ways. Firstly, you decide that you want somebody to be blocked. So you can just simply come in here, tick that, press save, and they will immediately not be able to log into their account. The second option about how blocked can be enabled is if somebody has failed to sign into their account several times unsuccessfully in a short amount of time. Now, this is obviously a security measure. And if their account is then blocked, the only way for that to become unblocked is for them to either reach out to you as an administrator and uh, you manually unblock them. And we'll do this in just a moment. Or they wait a period of time uh, for that to be unblocked. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to fail um, a login from a user. So you can see I've got this private session open up here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fail login a couple of times. You can see that I've done that wrong. Uh, and we've got failed login as account is zero is down there. So if I just reload this, we should see, there we go, that's gone to one. Uh, I'll do it again. Now it goes to two. Let's do it once more. Let's reload there. That's three, and I'm still not blocked. So let's just now do another one. That's four. So there's quite a few chances that somebody gets to be able to actually sign into their account before it's blocked. Uh, let's just keep going. Right, so what you can now see is that it's noticed that I've tried to sign in several times unsuccessfully. And you can see now that it's marked my account is blocked. And you can see that I'm blocked until a certain time. So this here is saying that it's until 11.22. So it's 9.22 here. So basically it's saying two hours until I'm unblocked. Now, if I was to carry on signing in, this would just increase exponentially over time. Now, let's just run through a scenario. Let's say that I've remembered my password and I type it incorrectly. So I've just done that, but it's still saying that I'm blocked. And that's because this is still active here. So if somebody is blocked and it says that message, you've been blocked by an administrator, you know immediately where to come to. So if we come underneath users, you can see that this has now got blocked and you can filter against these to find all the blocked users. And then you can update the user. And it's important that you unclick this, but also delete out these two fields as well. So you can just tab through them and delete them off and then press save when you're done. What we see a lot is that people actually untick this but leave these two blank, but that means that, that person will still be blocked until that, num that amount of time. So now if I try to sign in, it will let me in fine, which is brilliant. And we'll be able to see underneath here that my successful login count has gone up by one. And you can see when I've last logged in and everything. So that's how we deal with blocked accounts. Now, the most common thing that you will get is, I forgot my password. So there's a couple of things, again, that you can do for passwords. You can come underneath the user's account, and if we just scroll down to the bottom, you'll see that we have new password. If you give that a click, it presents us with four options. So the first one is send the new password by email. So if somebody emailed you in um, and the password, they want you to do a new password, you can basically um, click send the new password by email and then you can leave the option underneath as empty. And what it will do is it will basically send them a uh, automatic email with their password in it um, automatically to them. You just need to press the save button at the top. The other option that you've got underneath here is the option to be able to show the new password on screen. So if you wanted ModX to generate a completely random password for you, um, you would just simply tick this option, leave this one, uh, let ModX generate a password and press save. That will then create the new password for you. I mean, we can just do this now. And what we can then do is we can then just copy this password. And then this is what will be used to sign this user now in. So if I just uh, log out, paste the password in and I've signed in. And this is where you'd say to somebody, um, typically on the front end of the site, you know, we recommend the first thing you do is sign in and change the password to be something more memorable to yourself. There's also one extra option, and this is where you can specify the password. So simply come underneath here, type in what you want the new password to be, confirm it again, 
and then press save. So this is a really good way for you to specify what the password is. Now you can also send the new password by email as well. So if you tick that at the top, you enter in a new password, that will then be emailed to the user automatically for you. So obviously one of the most important things to do with this is obviously to ensure that you always press save after you've updated something to do with that user. And obviously good password strength is uh, something that we recommend strongly. Uh, and we'd encourage you to pass this on to all of your users as well. So what we say, our little line, is uh, at least eight characters long, a combination of upper and lower case letters, uh, maybe a number or two, and a special character, maybe an exclamation mark, an at symbol or a question mark. So I hope that you found this video useful. As always, if you have any questions or queries, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. Thanks for watching.